Hey guys, I'm, uh, I'll be talking about how life can be better with Git hooks. Uh, I'm Deepank, I'm an engineer at PayPal. So um, has anyone here used Git hooks? I'm sure everyone must have used Git, but Git hooks, a lot of us. Anyone not heard of Git hooks before? OK, still a lot. <laughs> so uh, advanced users, please uh, bear with me. I'll be uh, wanting to cater to all sorts of audiences. So uh, what are Git hooks? Uh, well, Git hooks are essentially just custom scripts that you can write and uh, customize the internal behavior of Git. So uh, on certain events uh, of Git, you can uh, write scripts that are triggered uh, at certain points of time. So uh, well, why use them? Because they make your life much better. So Git is a tool that we use almost every hour. If, uh, most of us are software engineers, I believe. So uh, Git hooks can really be used to make life better. And the best part about it is that uh, you can use any language uh, to write them. So as long as the language uh, is executable by the environment, uh, you're good to go. So uh, where are these Git hooks? So if you, if let's say, if sample Git repo is our repo, and we go to the .git uh, hidden directory in it, and list the files, there's a Git, uh, there's a hooks directory. Uh, basically, the hooks are located there, and uh, there are basically two types of hooks, uh, client hooks and server hooks. Client hooks are the hooks that you install on a developer uh, machine. So they're, they're for individual developers to enhance their uh, programming environment and uh, basically just make their development, development workflow a bit easier. Whereas server hooks are hooks that are installed on remote Git repos. And they could be used for a variety of reasons, like sending notifications on pushes and uh, you know, things like enforcing some policies, uh, like code quality and all. So if we look at what are the sorts of Git hooks uh, present in your hooks directory, there are a number of Git hooks. Uh, there are nine in total by default. So uh, uh, in a newly initiated uh, Git repo repository, there are, all the Git hooks are extended with the dot sample uh, extension. So what uh, that dot sample does is uh, it tells Git that this is not to be executed. So if you just remove the dot sample from the extension, uh, it will execute the script. So uh, you can see there are a number of uh, hooks that can be used for a variety of reasons. Uh, some, import, some important hooks that many of us use in the everyday life are uh, four git hooks that are in the commit workflow. So when you type git commit, what happens is these git hooks get executed in uh, this order. So the pre-commit hook gets executed first. So basically, before anything happens, uh, when you type git commit, the pre-commit hook uh, is run. So what this is typically used for is things like running unit tests in your app, checking for code quality. Those who've done JavaScript might have heard about JSCS and things like that. So uh, those things can be hooked into this to uh, make sure that you're committing something that's uh, correct and runs well. The prepare commit message is uh, run when you Typically, when you write git commit, uh, it opens an editor which allows you to edit the commit message. So it allows you to modify the commit message that comes up in that editor. The git, uh, after that one is run, uh, the commit message uh, hook is run. That is something when you save that file, it appends, it could be used to append something onto that file or really modify the actual message automatically. And then after that is the post commit, which could be used for a number of reasons. Not the most common one, but it could be used for things like notifying uh, the user or doing something like that. So one thing to note about it is if you, in any of these uh, three commit, commit hooks, if you exit with a status which is non-zero, uh, it's actually going to abort the git commit. 
So that is something we use. Uh, so let's look at a simple, very, very simple example of a hook. So this is a pre-rebase hook. It's not part of the commit workflow, but uh, it hooks onto the git rebase command. So if we go to the uh, pre-rebase uh, hook, and so basically I told that I could, we could write hooks in any language. So this is an example in shell script. So what the first line does is just tell the, uh, just tell git what uh, language is this in, as in the loop, the path for the uh, interpreter. So uh, this is just an example that it echoes the, echoes a message and exits with status one. So basically rebase is totally not allowed. Some people believe that rebase is dangerous. So this thing totally uh, doesn't allow rebases. When we type git rebase a particular branch, this is going to abort rebase, and the user is not allowed to rebase. So uh, one thing to note is that uh, client hooks uh, should not particularly be used for enforcing stuff, because, because it's a client hook. Any client can just, we can just go to the hooks directory and edit it. It's basically used for uh, making things simpler for us. That's all it's for. But what can be used for enforcing stuff is something like server hooks. So server hooks are uh, actually uh, hooks that are in the server repos, the git repos that you push your uh, repo to. So some examples are pre-receive, update, and post-receive. So pre-receive is uh, the hook that's run when the server just receives uh, a git push, uh, for example. Uh, the update is when it uh, updates its repo with the new commits that you've sent it. And post receive is uh, typically used for notifying or sending emails uh, when the git push is completed. And yeah, typical users are enforcing policies like code quality, uh, avoiding console.logs and things like that inside your uh, code and sending emails. And uh, the catch here is GitHub uh, doesn't allow server hooks. Uh, sure, go ahead. Uh, is this something we can use with like Bitbucket and GitHub? No, you cannot. That's what I was okay. getting into. The catch here is we cannot use this with uh, GitHub. Bitbucket, I'm not sure, but GitHub, you definitely can't use it. Because the thing is, uh, if you allow a user such access, he can really run any script on the server. So that's why they don't allow. What's recommended is to uh, use webhooks and stuff like that to actually run another service which uh, runs in some events. And the client hooks, are they shared with other uh, clones of the repository? No, it's not actually. The dot git repo, the dot uh, hooks uh, is not shared when you git clone. So what you could do is uh, link, uh, what's recommended typically to share the scripts is, so let's go back and see uh, the dot git repo here, uh, it's not actually, the hooks directory is not shared across when you clone a redirect directory, right? So uh, some people say that these hooks are meant for individual developers, but some other people say that, well, we want to share these hooks, right, in, across a team, for example. So what's uh, a recommended approach is to have another directory inside your uh, uh, main repo which is meant for hooks, where you store the hooks itself, the scripts. And um, you could document in your uh, readme, things like that. So when you clone, you symlink your uh, scripts to that right. script, yeah. Isn't there an opening for code injection? Sorry? Isn't there an opening for code injection? Because if you fetch from the remote that you can check out a branch that is not, uh, that, that has malicious intent, we single we can symlink them. We could copy as well. Uh, depends. So if you symlink them and you check out to a new branch uh, which contain the malicious code like rm rf, you learn that. Yeah, so that's always there, right? If you're working in a team. Uh, you need to make sure no one has that script. 
but that's definitely that can be done. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, that's a good point. That uh, this always this thing of responsibility with hooks. You with hooks you can really run anything because you have the access to run the script. Uh, okay, so that's about server hooks, and that's all I had. It's a very simple talk. Any other questions? <laughs> what, are your, what, are, what are your like best uh, line and server hooks? Um, I actually use the pre-commit hook the most. So uh, I work in uh, Node.js, and well. Uh, I'm at PayPal, so Douglas Crockford, if you know about know him, he's a big, uh, because he wrote JS Lint, he's a big seller of JS Lint. So we hook uh, JS Lint into the pre commit hook and then run for code quality. And we also run uh, unit tests with the pre commit hook. Yeah. If you uh, return a non zero exit from the pre received hook, will it actually prevent the push from happening? I believe so. I haven't tried that out, but I, I think so, yeah. Yes, you can stop a push if you return a non zero exit from previous yeah. In fact, um, in my project, they use that to make sure that the commit goes to a certain format. And if it doesn't follow that format, the push gets rejected. Yeah, there are, there are actually, you can find uh, many hooks over the internet, which, uh, uh, so dip, all this also depends on the environment you're working on. If you're working on Node.js, uh, there are libraries that actually install the hooks for you, uh, and there are NPM modules that will do uh, all that for you. So for example, JS hint, if you're working on JavaScript, uh, it also comes with an NPM module that Installs all the GitHub stuff for you, so you. Can you show some example of JS hint. Sorry. Can you show some example of JS hint. JS hint. Well, what sort of example are you looking for? How does it install and what it does? Okay, if you. Go into <coughs> I don't have access, but I don't have the any. Okay. Yellow pencil, I think, is the password. Send on desktop. Essentially, there are some NPM modules you could just reuse and install in your packages that would uh, do uh, do that stuff for you. So you just NPM install that module and uh, it should be able to do that. Um, not really. So the thing is, uh, if you are working on a particular environment, and uh, well, typically, if you want your script to be run on every of your team members' uh, environments, it's recommended that 
you make sure the prerequisites of the environment are met. So uh, you don't really, I haven't seen uh, particular uh, if else uh, things that run on dependent environments. Is there a global hook Oh, yeah. I see that. Like, so then you could use like client side hooks for all repositories? No, unfortunately, there's nothing like that. But uh, typically, you need to install the hooks in every individual machine. Is there, is there built in support for running multiple hooks, or do you have to kind of write a wrapper or script around it? Like, if you want to run two different checks mm -hmm. on a commit? Right? Mm -hmm. You just have to, it's only going to execute one executable. Uh, so, well, it's essentially, for example, if I want to run two scripts in the pre-commit hook, uh, it's essentially just a script. So you could just uh, write different files if you want to separate it out or write different modules. Things like that. Can you show an example of how JSON works? Oh. Well, do you have a repo with a JSON Let me. S I don't have actually. I have my company repo, but <laughs> I doubt I can show it <laughs> at this point. Uh, can show it? Seriously. <laughs> seriously. <laughs> Share it with you later. <laughs> okay. Do you want to actually just run, just create a new repository? Uh, add JSON as a dependency. Mm -hmm. Just create a new repository. Add JSON as a dependency. Do an install and create a formula file. Try to do it. What? Sure. <laughs> Anything else? 